Welcome to Gospel Applied, where we're trying to connect the gospel and what we believe on Sunday and sing about on Sunday to real life on Monday. I'm excited that you're still joining in with us as we've been talking about these different topics. Today, we're going to be talking about gratitude versus complaining. Uh, when I was in high school all the way through college, I worked at a warehouse that sold parts for three and four wheelers. And during that season of life, I worked around some pretty rough guys. Uh, but one of the defining characteristics of that workplace environment was complaining. Everyone constantly was complaining about something. If it was the work conditions, because we didn't have air conditioning in the summers of Memphis, or if it was the boss, or the, the hours we were working, or what we were having to do that day, there was just always complaining going on. And so what I want to talk about today is why we're called to gratitude instead of complaining, not just out of uh, kind of a, a moral impulse, but because of what the gospel has done for us. The gospel actually leads us to a gratitude that crowds out that kind of complaining. You know, in Psalm chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, we read these words. I will thank the Lord with all my heart. I will declare all your wondrous works. I will rejoice and boast about you, and I will sing about your name most high. Thanking the Lord is actually a core part of what you and I are called to do. Because gratitude at its core is acknowledging and appreciating the contributions of others. At a really basic level, what we do when we give thanks for someone or something is we're acknowledging that they've done something on our behalf. So our holiday system here in America is somewhat designed to try to encourage gratitude whether that's fallen soldiers, people who've died in our armed services, or people that are currently serving, or if it's July 4th, remembering our independence, or even Thanksgiving Day, which is technically devoted to remembering the contributions of others in our lives. We have these rhythms built into our lives because we do have so much that's been done for us. Gratitude is when we're acknowledging, we're stopping long enough to really see what others have done on our behalf. And while gratitude makes sense you know, at a basic level, what we recognize is complaining, uh, the complaining that so often drifts into our life, seeps into our life, is really a dissatisfaction that's birthed from a focus on what isn't, what's not happening. It's an inclination to focus on what's wrong with situations before we look at what's right. So in 1947, Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier and there was an engineer working with Jaeger and the other pilots at that time. Uh, his name was Edward Murphy. And he had an interesting phrase that he came up with that's really stuck even to this day. He said, if there's any way that something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Popularized version, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Maybe some of you have heard of Murphy's Law. Uh, that's from Edward Murphy, who was an engineer during the 40s, during those years where they were breaking the sound barrier. It's very easy to adopt a Murphy's Law kind of perspective on every area of your life, where your first inclination is to assume and to look for ways that things are going to go wrong. And while I don't think there's anything wrong with being strategic or being aware of some of the negative things that are going on, if we develop a critical spirit... If we are always quick to point out what's wrong or talk about what didn't go right or focus on the negative, I'm not sure we're really living out the gospel in a practical way in our lives. The way that you and I live out gratitude from a gospel motivation is by making the gospel personal in our lives. The way that you and I keep from drifting into a critical spirit, we keep from Murphy's Law becoming our default kind of operation and way of looking at the world, is by remembering that the gospel, the good news that Jesus died for us and that he rose again, is not just for some bad people out there in a galaxy far, far away, but remembering that Jesus died for us. Being able to call specific sins in your life and in my life that actually put Jesus on the cross. Making the gospel personal is the way that really makes us appreciative of what's been done for us. You see, it's when I really see the depth of my problem, my problem, your problem, that we really see the beauty of God's grace. My kids have these little LED flashlights that we've given them so that at night if they need to go to the bathroom, they can go without tripping over something. If they want to read a book for a little bit, they can do that. One of the things about those LED flashlights, even though they're incredibly powerful, if you turn on the light, 
and turn on that LED flashlight, you really can't see the light. It's very, very dim. It's only when you turn off the lights and turn on that flashlight that it really begins to light up the room. And the grace of God is very similar. It's only when we see our personal sin, the darkness in our lives, and we shine the light of the gospel in that darkness that it really begins to come to light. See, I'm convinced one of the reasons why gratitude is so elusive to so many of us is because the gospels become theoretical to us. Yeah, we know we did some sin maybe way back when, and we prayed a prayer at VBS or youth camp or some worship service years ago, but but the, the reality that Jesus is still doing things in my life, the reality that there are things I'm doing this very day that Jesus is delivering me from has been lost to us. You see, when you anchor in the gospel, your gratitude isn't dependent upon your circumstances or what's going on in your life. You're anchoring into something that's always contributing, always doing something on your behalf. When you anchor yourself in the gospel, you remember that what Jesus has done for you is better than anything else in this world. I know this, oftentimes the reason that gratitude is elusive is because we've allowed something in our life to blind ourselves from seeing it. You know, I don't know if you ever tried this, but if you take a quarter and hold a quarter close enough to your eye, it can actually blot out the entire sun. Try it. Try to go outside, put a quarter close enough to your eye, it'll block out the entire sun. In the same way, we can let things in our lives blot out the beauty and the goodness of God's grace. My encouragement to you today is to live a life of gratitude, acknowledging the contribution Jesus has made for you, crowd out complaining in your life, and making the gospel personal. As we apply the gospel to our lives, let's make sure we're making it personal and we're moving towards gratitude rather than a spirit of complaining and criticism.